Good morning everybody and welcome back to Crazy Bees. My name is Debbie if you're new and if you're just joining us for the day we appreciate you coming to hang out with us. It is 7 o'clock in the morning and I have some family coming in today so I am going to make a breakfast casserole. I already got started. Uh, I took my bacon, chopped it up, and used my cast iron skillet, and I browned it. That was the first time I used my cast iron for this, and it turned out really well. I like a crunchy bacon. And then I'm going to mix that with um, some sausage. So I'm going to do half and half, and then I'm going to save the rest for another meal. So right now I'm just doing all my prep work. The next thing I did was I took out some of our frozen uh, peppers from the garden last year that I need to get used up before our, all of our new stuff comes in. It's um, starting to ripen up out there as it gets a little bit cooler. Uh, the peppers are starting to ripen up more. So we're going to break up this uh, red onion that I had chopped up and had in the freezer and get these sauteed until they are translucent. And then once that's done, I can put the casserole together. But I don't want to put the casserole together until I know they're on their way. So that it's nice and fresh out of the oven. At our casserole getting ready to go into the oven, I took some uh, diced potatoes and mixed it with the sausage and the bacon, onion, green pepper, and now I am taking 12 eggs that I have beaten with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and some half and half here. I'm going to get this all mixed up. And then we're going to ladle it over the potato mixture. I don't just want to dump it because then it is not going to get evenly distributed. So we're going to ladle it so that every area has the mixture. I need a bigger ladle. Here we go. Get it all up in all those corners because this is what will hold everything together. And I've also got cheese in here. Can't do without the cheese. And if you wanted a little bit more spice to this, you could add uh, like a um, jalapenos or something even spicier if you wanted it. but. We have our flakes that we make, and uh, if anybody wants spice, they can throw those on there. So we're going to take this, we're going to pop it in a 350 degree oven, and I'm going to check it in about 45 minutes because it's pretty thick. Okay, we finally made it back. I apologize. I got that casserole in the oven, and... Um, our family came over and we just had a wonderful morning with them and then I had to go to work for the afternoon. So I just got home. I had a couple slices left and I just wanted to pull it out and show you um, how beautiful it turned out. It's got a nice uh, rich golden crust on it. Um, to do it again I might um, delete about half of the bag of potatoes. There's a lot of potatoes in here, but it was still absolutely delicious. I used the 12 eggs, um, and it was really thick. I had started it at 45 minutes at 350 and ended up bumping it up to 400 degrees for another, was it 20 minutes? 20 Between 20 and 30 minutes. I kept checking it. And then when you do that, stick a knife in it, and if the knife comes out clean, then uh, it's good. And you can also tell by, by smell. You can kind of smell when things are um, close to finished. So 
Anyway, this turned out really great. Um, I highly recommend you trying it. Um, it is great for a larger group of people. Um, if you have some family coming in town for the holidays, this would be a great thing to serve for breakfast in the morning. Have a great night. All right, everybody, welcome back. It is the weekend. We are coming into Thanksgiving week, and I wanted to make a dessert uh, for our family and my son is going to be going camping and I wanted him to be able to take one along. I was looking for uh, cake recipes and I saw this bun cake on here on um, one of the recipes and I could not resist it so I had to get it. But look at this. Isn't this beautiful? It's all pumpkins all the way around and then leaf structure all the way around the bottom. So I think when this comes out, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous as long as it comes out the way it's supposed to. So the first thing that I'm supposed to do is generously spray this bun pan. And we, are, of course, are using Pam. Okay. Then I want to give you the ingredients that I kind of put together. The first thing that it wants me to do is cream my cream cheese. All right, let's try this again. Okay, to the cream cheese we are going to add a half a cup of sugar and one egg at room temperature. knock down my sides okay now like I said I was going to be making this for I'm going to make two so I roasted some uh, pecans in the oven and if you chop your pecans and then put them in the oven Watch them a little bit more carefully because they take less time than uh, putting a whole pecan in the oven to, to roast or to get toasty. Um, mine were only about half the time and they were trying to burn on me. So we're going to take this and we're just going to fold in the pecans. You don't need to mix those in. And it's your preference if you want whole pecans or if you want... The chocolate. Now, the next thing we want to do is get our dry ingredients ready. I'm going to read uh, what I put in this bowl. I have two and three quarter cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground ginger, and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And you need to mix this thoroughly. Because if you've done a lot of baking, you know that if you get a bite of baking soda, it doesn't taste very well. So we're going to get this well incorporated. Okay, and now I'm going to set this aside for a second. And we're going to work on our wet ingredients. In this bowl... I have a 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree and then um, let's see one cup of brown sugar, one cup of vegetable oil and four large eggs at room temperature. I'm going to use the same beaters. That little bit of cream cheese that's on there isn't going to hurt anything at all. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to add in our dry ingredients to the wet ingredients and like I've showed you what I do before is I put them in and then I hand mix before I mix with the mixer just so I don't get that big poof of the flour flying everywhere so I just kind of fold it in a little bit first Okay, 
now we'll mix. Okay, mix in our sides. Okay, now what we're going to do is take half of this mixture and put it into this bundt cake form. Then we're going to take the cream cheese mixture and dollop it inside on top of that mixture, of the pumpkin mixture. It gives you a pretty thick cream cheese layer, which is just going to be delicious. And in the meantime, I have my oven at 350 degrees. Now we're going to take the rest of this and put it on top of that cream cheese mixture. We want to make sure that we get every last bit Okay, now that we have got our bump cake filled, we are going to set it in the oven and we are going to cook this for 50 to 55 minutes in a 350 degree oven. That look beautiful? Alright you guys, we've got the pumpkin bump cake all done. I think it is a gorgeous display and I've tried it and it's got very good flavor. It is moist on the base, and then you have that cream cheese with the toasted pecans in the center, and then you have the pumpkin on the top. Now, those molds, you know, they're, the, the wells are a bit smaller, so the pumpkins got a little bit darker by the time everything else was done uh, than I would have liked, but they're not burnt but they, I feel like they're a little bit, not as moist as I would like them to be. So, um, I might try it a different way next year, see what creative ideas I can come up with. But uh, for the most part, I would recommend it. And that mold is just, that bun cake mold is just beautiful. So, happy Thanksgiving. Here's a dessert for you to take to uh, families and friends if you're doing uh, Friendsgiving this would be a great thing to take. I hope you all have a great week and we'll see you on the next video.